Russia, Belarus not invited to Paris Olympics, IOC. Russia and Belarus will not receive formal invitations to the 2024 Paris Olympics, according to the International Olympic Committee, IOC. The decision is due to the ongoing war in Ukraine. While the teams will not receive invitations, individual athletes with Russian or Belarusian passports could still compete as neutral athletes. The IOC's Ethics Commission recommended allowing neutral participation for athletes with Russian or Belarusian passports but barred those actively supporting the war in Ukraine or affiliated with the Russian or Belarusian militaries or national security agencies. The IOC stated that the final decision regarding the participation of Russian and Belarusian athletes in the 2024 Paris Olympics will be made by the committee at its discretion. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky criticized the IOC's recommendation, arguing that allowing Russians to compete as neutral athletes would bring representatives of a terrorist state into world sports. IOC President Thomas Bach defended the decision, emphasizing the importance of keeping sports competitions open to all athletes. U.S. Buying Decommissioned MIM-23 Hawk Missiles from Taiwan for Ukraine, Report The United States is reportedly purchasing decommissioned MIM-23 Hawk anti-air missiles from Taiwan and plans to transfer them to Ukraine as part of a new military aid package. The Phase 3 MIM-23 Hawks, which were removed from Taiwan's arsenal in June 2023, will be sent to Ukraine to help counter Russian aircraft. The decision was made after consultations between U.S. and Taiwanese officials in 2022. The MIM-23 Hawk is a medium-range surface-to-air missile system developed by Raytheon. It was initially designed to target aircraft but has been adapted for missile interception. The U.S. aid package for Ukraine, announced on June 9, also includes Hawk air defense systems, Patriot surface-to-air missile ammunition, and Puma drones. Saki says NATO has valid concern about future U.S. commitment. Former White House Press Secretary Jen Saki acknowledged the valid concern within NATO about the United States' future commitment to the military alliance. Saki stated that the Trump administration's departure from established norms and policies had made allies nervous about the long-term commitment of the United States to NATO. She highlighted the challenges of asking the U.S. and Europe to provide significant financial and military support for Ukraine. Saki emphasized that President Biden is working to address these concerns and navigate the shifting political landscape. In contrast to the Trump administration, President Biden has expressed strong support for NATO and emphasized the United States' continued commitment to the alliance. While some NATO countries have pledged to increase defense spending, the outcomes of these commitments vary. Trump asks top Georgia court to disqualify election pro prosecutor and toss grand jury report. Former President Donald Trump's legal team has filed petitions in the Georgia Supreme Court and Fulton County Superior Court seeking to prevent the district attorney, Fonnie Willis, from prosecuting him and to dismiss a special grand jury report related to the investigation into his actions following the 2020 election. The investigation focuses on whether Trump and his allies violated any laws in their efforts to overturn his election loss in Georgia. Trump's lawyers argue that the case has been marred by anomalies and should be halted, claiming that the procedures have not been normal or reasonable. They also seek to prevent the presentation of any evidence from the special grand jury's investigation to a regular grand jury. The petitions come in response to indications from Willis that she plans to seek an indictment in the case soon. Ban on troops communicating with religious freedom group clears house. A provision in the fiscal 2024 defense policy bill, introduced by Rep. Mike Turner, a Republican from Ohio, that would prohibit Defense Department personnel from communicating with the Military Religious Freedom Foundation MRFF, has survived a House vote. The amendment would also prevent commanders from taking action based on any claim or protest made by the MRFF without the authority of the Secretary of Defense. MRFF founder Mikey Weinstein criticized the provision, calling it an attack on the rights of military personnel. The MRFF advocates for religious freedom in the armed forces and has been involved in controversial cases, drawing criticism from conservative groups and lawmakers. Weinstein has vowed to challenge the provision in court and is urging senators to remove it from the bill. Ukrainian general says cluster bombs could radically change the battlefield. Ukrainian General Alexander Tarnovsky stated in an interview with CNN that the cluster munitions provided by the United States could have a significant impact on the battlefield. He acknowledged that the arrival of these weapons would give Ukraine an advantage, but emphasized that they have not been used yet. 
The Pentagon confirmed the delivery of cluster munitions to Ukraine, following President Biden's decision to provide them to support Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russian troops. Tarnovsky also mentioned that the current operation has not been as successful as expected, and there is a shortage of artillery munitions. Cluster munitions are controversial due to their potential harm to civilians and are banned in many countries. Despite concerns raised by lawmakers and human rights activists, Tarnovsky assured that Ukraine intends to use the bombs only in areas away from civilians and with the approval of senior leadership. Canada unfreezes talks with Turkey on export controls after NATO move source. Canada has resumed talks with Turkey to lift export controls on drone parts after Turkey agreed to support Sweden's bid to join NATO. President Erdogan's surprise decision to endorse Sweden's membership came with several concessions from other countries. In return, the United States announced its intention to transfer F-16 fighter jets to Turkey. Canada, a NATO member, agreed to reopen discussions on lifting export controls on drone parts, provided Turkey ratified Sweden's bid. The talks on export controls had been frozen since Turkey initially objected to Sweden's NATO membership bid. Erdogan has been using various leverage points to negotiate concessions from other countries, including the EU, in order to advance Turkey's interests. Republicans blast Biden's European troop mobilization, daring Russia to shoot first. Republicans have criticized President Biden's decision to call up thousands of reserve troops to support military operations. Biden announced the mobilization of reserve troops for Operation Atlantic Resolve in the European Command's area of responsibility. GOP Senators Ted Cruz and Mike Lee expressed concerns about potential escalation with Russia and accused Biden of weakness. Lee suggested that Biden is daring Russia to take action, while Cruz argued against sending U.S. troops to fight in Ukraine. The troop mobilization has raised questions about the justification and purpose of the operation. Critics are seeking answers and transparency regarding the decision. Despite the criticism, President Biden reaffirmed the U.S. commitment to defend NATO allies during a press conference in Lithuania. Appeals Court pauses ban on Biden administration social media contacts. A federal appeals court has temporarily halted an order that would prevent Biden administration officials from communicating with major social media companies. The court will consider the government's request for a longer-term pause while pursuing a full appeal. The Justice Department argues against complying with the nationwide injunction and seeks to keep it on hold until the case concludes. The case involves Republican attorneys general and individual users who claim that the administration unconstitutionally coerced social media companies to remove unfavorable COVID-19 information. The court's order is not indicative of the case's merits, and further proceedings are expected. If the pause is denied, the Justice Department may seek intervention from the U.S. Supreme Court. Scholz plays down need for policy to spur de-risking from China. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz downplayed the need for government policies to encourage companies to reduce their reliance on China, stating that many companies were already diversifying their supply chains, investments, and exports. Germany recently published its first China strategy, urging companies to de-risk from China, but Scholz believes that companies have already adjusted to this new perspective. He emphasized the alignment between companies' investment strategies and the government's approach. The strategy was delayed due to disagreements between the Social Democrats and the Greens. Regarding funding for Germany's shift towards a stronger military and a carbon-neutral economy, Scholz pointed to the government's actions this year without providing further details on long-term financing. The Finance Ministry, led by the Free Democrats, has emphasized the importance of a balanced budget, which Scholz supports.